Hello everyone. We are now embarking on the final unit of the course, which is on graph data structures. So we finally have all the other data structures that we need to build up the most flexible collection that we've seen yet. So let me start with a kind of graph called an undirected graph. So an undirected graph is a set of vertices, which is analogous to a node in a tree, um, and edges that connect them. So let me draw an example here. So I will depict the vertices as black dots, and then I'll draw the edges as line segments. So, so far this is a tree. Remember, I have mentioned this before. We have seen graphs in the context of trees when I said a tree is, is a graph that has one connected component and no cycles. But now I'm about to add a cycle, so this, this graph is no longer a tree. It's a more general object. But yeah, maybe I'll go ahead and start with this. I'll label these vertices. And that is the graph that I have. Okay. So it's really as simple as that. So what I want to do is, is start to think about how do I realize this with a data structure in Python. So let me bring up some code here and I'll have this picture to the sides. So we have this in our mind. And let's think about what we, what we kind of want in a graph abstract data type. So maybe I will define a class um, and I'll think about the what the abstract data type is first, but then I'll, I'll actually fill in a data structure to realize this. So let's say for now, you know, I don't know how I'm going to implement these yet. I haven't decided, but let's let me call the shots here. So I'll say, okay, maybe one thing I want to do is, is I want to be able to add a vertex. Maybe another thing I want to be able to do is add an edge. So this is the abstract data type right now. I'm not, I'm not saying how this is going to happen, but um, I'll make it happen in a moment. So the edge takes two parameters because I'm going to add an edge between two vertices. Maybe I also want to be able to get all of the neighbors of a vertex. So a neighbor of a vertex is just I'll write this down here just so we have it, but but um, this is, or I should say the neighbors of V is the set of all vertices U so that there is an edge connecting U and V. Okay, so I would say, you know, in this graph as an example, all the neighbors are, whoops, not sure what happened there. Um, but yeah, as an example in this graph, the neighbors of four are one and three. Okay. So that, that's gonna be very helpful when we when we get to graph algorithms to be able to say what the neighbors of a graph are. All right, let, let's stick there, there are certainly other things we, we could add. We we could remove vertices, we could remove edges. Um, and there's other things we could do to the graph, but, but this is, let me just stick to this kind of simple ADT for now, and then we'll see what to do. Okay. So let me start with, I'll call this um, a graph edge set. So let me start off representing this kind of very much like the definition. So what I'll do is I'll make the vertices a set, and I'll make the edges a set. And this is one of the reasons we had to wait to get to this stage of the course, because we have to know what a set is behind the scenes. This is actually a hash table um, and all that. Okay, so when we add a vertex, it's, it's as simple as saying self.v.add, whatever that vertex is. When we go to add an edge, we can add that as a tuple. Um, one thing we have to be mindful of, though, is that you know, this is an undirected graph. So if I've added the edge and, I, and, and zero is my first parameter and one is the second parameter, well, one and zero is also represents the same edge, right? So this shouldn't really matter what order I, I pass u and v to. So I'll say, you know, I should say, if u v is in edges, we assume that v u is also in edges. So that's just something we'll have to be mindful of in a moment when we go to get the neighbors. 
So we'll have to check if, if we want to know about an edge, then we have to check to see if you know both both UV or VU is, is in this edge set. Okay. But we're adding a tuple, so, so that is something that can exist in a set. The tuple is immutable. Assuming that these these are, are hashable, then, then these will also be this tuple will also be hashable. Okay. Great. So yeah, and actually I should say, you know, we're assuming that that um, all vertices have the hash function implemented and the equality function implemented because that's what we need for a set, right? For these to be sets. But certainly, you know, numbers <laughs> have that. And, and But there's th this graph class is more general. I could store strings in it that represent the nodes. I could store other objects as long as I've defined hash and equality. Good. All right, well, let's think about how to define the get neighbors method. And this is going to show maybe the first downside of this data structure, actually. So, so, so far, it's quite nice. It's, it's very simple. So if I were going to add, let's say I make my graph, and, and let's say that I, that I add everything that I've, I've shown in this example here. So I'll say, all right, let me call this graph edge set, construct that. And then I'll say graph.add. Well, I know I'm going to add the vertices 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So I'll say for i in range, or maybe for v in range, 5, graph.add vertex v. And let me go ahead and add the edges here. So I'll say graph.add edge. Okay, so what do, what do we want? We want 0, 1, 1, 2. So I added 0, 1, 1, 2. I also want 1, 4. That's that edge. Oops. Graph.add edge 4, 3. And then one, three. Okay. So that should be all the edges there. And so far that code runs, it's, it's very simple. But let's see about, about the neighbors here. Okay. So if I was asking for the neighbors of a particular vertex, what I have to do actually is loop through. So the algorithm I have to do in this data, data structure that I'm using here with the two sets is loop through every edge and see if V is in that edge. So maybe I'll make an empty set of neighbors. Um, I'll loop through all the edges. So I'll say for um, e in self dot e. So I'll loop through all the edges. And I'll say if v in e, then I need to figure out what the other object is. So actually, yeah, let's see, a couple ways to do this. Um, I guess I'll say, well, there's a couple ways to do it, but I'll say, all right, let me, let me just unpack this here. I'll say A, B is equal to E. Actually, more simply, I can say it like this, A, B, and cell to V. So I'll say if the first vertex in this edge is V, then I, then I need to add um, B, the second vertex, to the neighbors. Otherwise, if um, the vertex whose neighbors I want is, is actually the second vertex in this edge, then I'll be sure to add the first vertex in this edge. Again, the order here is arbitrary because we're dealing with an undirected graph. So I'm not really sure if, you know, if V is actually part of this edge, I'm not sure if it's going to be the first vertex or the second vertex. So I have to check both and then add the other vertex as the neighbor. All right, so I'll do that. And then finally, I'll return the set. And so I told you a moment ago that, that the neighbors of four were one and three. Let's just see if that's the case. So I'll say graph.get neighbors of, of four. I get one and three, great. Um, and I'll just go ahead and maybe loop through all of them here and just print out what the neighbors are. So I'll print v, graph.get neighbors v. All right, so zero has one neighbor, one. One has actually a bunch of neighbors connected to everything else. Um, two has only one neighbor, which is one. Three has two neighbors, four and one. And four has one neighbor, three and one. Or sorry, three, uh, four has two neighbors, three and one. Okay, but, but if, we, if we think here that, 
you know, if we think in terms of the number of elements that are in here, so let me say that that um, let I'll say this this is the cardinality of v be the number of vertices, and this is the cardinality of e be the number of edges. Well, the time complexity of this algorithm here is big O of, of E, right? Because we have to loop through every edge. All right, so, so that is actually a bit of a drawback of this data structure because we can do a lot better. Um, I'll show you that in a moment, but it is quite a simple data structure. And, and if, you, if you don't have to query neighbors, but you just have to draw the graph, it's a very good data structure because you just go through and loop through all the edges, draw them, loop through all the vertices, draw them. So if I had a coordinate to go along with each vertex, then drawing the graph with this data structure would be very efficient. Um, this is analogous to something in computer graphics called the OFF file format, um, object file format, which is used to draw these 3D surfaces that are called triangle meshes. You, you, actually, in that case, you have vertices, edges, and faces, the, these triangles, oftentimes, usually. Triangles sometimes higher. Um, order polygons. But in that case, you know, there, you just rep represent the set of vertices, the set of edges, and the set of triangles. And to draw it, it's very efficient. So, so that is a good data structure to draw. If you don't care about what what's nearby, like neighbors, then that's that's a great data structure. So just to show you what I mean with, with the triangle mesh, here's an example of a familiar fellow. Um, and I can show you here, he's actually made up of a bunch of little triangles that are glued together. And the file is called homework.off. And, and so the, the file format here is just like the data structure we created for our graph. Um, what it does is it stores the coordinates of all the vertices. So they're x, y, z coordinates of the vertices. And then it stores the index of the vertices that are used to make up the triangles. So that, that's just like an edge set. In this case, it's a set of triangles instead of a set of edges. But this is the format that's used to render these triangle meshes on your graphics card. So if all we, we need to do is draw things, this really simple data structure is, is what we want. But um, we're going to start doing more complicated things on graphs, so we're going to need a fancier data structure. But let's just pause for a moment and try a little exercise with this data structure. 